Good morning, YouTube. I'm just finishing up another one of my 12 volt relay boxes and thought I'd show you what's inside. This is the same box I've used in my kitchen and attic LED lighting videos posted earlier. Links here in the upper right corner. This box will be going out in my patio to control three LED strip lights I'll be putting out there. It'll use a wall transformer plugged into an outlet that's controlled by a switch at the patio door. So this box, along with this class two wall transformer, is what lets me safely interface my low voltage lighting with the high voltage house wiring. So let's see what's inside. So this box here uses a standard 12 volt 30 amp headlight relay and then a switch, four banana jacks, and a coaxial power plug up there. And I make each box to fit the application, and I locate the connections and the switch to suit the particular application. In this case, I'll be mounting this box high up on a wall in the patio, so I place the switch on the bottom side for easier access. And you could easily wire this into an electrical work box and cut it into a wall if you wanted. I've chosen to use banana plugs for my main connections for a few reasons. They're easy to work with, there's no tools required, they're quite small in size, they're inexpensive and quite flexible as far as testing and expansion. So I use the banana plugs on all my lighting circuits so it's easy to swap out boxes or pull one down for testing or expand the system. And you could just as easily use wire nuts or other types of connectors, not saying you must use banana plugs. Then there's this 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter coax power jack here that accepts a plug from the 12 volt wall supply for remote operation. So this is what lets me safely connect to the house wiring using a UL listed class 2 wall transformer. I don't have a fuse inside this box, but a fuse holder could easily be added. So instead I power this box off of a fuse block with a 5 amp or 7.5 amp fuse to stay below the 100 watt class 2 power limit. So for the wiring specifics I have this simple schematic here we can look at and as you can see the negative connection goes straight through the box. You can see that in inside the box there and then I tie the relay coil and remote negative connection to this same negative terminal right there. The incoming positive connection goes to the Relay 30 terminal here, as well as one side of this switch. The other side of the switch and the remote positive input run to the other side of the relay coil. And then I added this optional snubber diode across the relay coil to help dissipate the back EMF from switching the relay coil off. So then the output contact of the relay connects to the positive connection on the output here. And then I added this little RC snubber circuit across the output of the relay to help with arcing across the relay contacts. It's probably not needed with a resistor limited LED strip light, but if I ever use the LEDs with uh, switch mode drivers, this might help a little bit. So there are two ways to operate the relay. One is via this remote input. So if power is applied, the relay turns on and sends power to the LEDs. And if I turn off the power, the relay is turned off. And then the other mode is with the manual switch. If I turn the switch on, the LEDs light and turn the switch off and the LEDs go off. So the switch is there to allow for operation if the grid is down since it would be silly to have backup lighting and not be able to use it because the grid is down and I can't apply power here. So you might note that if I use both the remote input and the switch at the same time I'm shorting this input to this input. You can see right there and yes, that can happen. It generally causes no problems as a class 2 power supply is current limited and they tolerate even a dead short to ground. So there's basically no problem there. Everything still works by itself and together. I can turn that on, that off, turn the power off. To be even safer, you could use a single pole double throw switch here. 
and this is alternate schematic. And in, in that case, what you want to do is you would connect the relay coil to the center terminal of the switch. And if you use an on, off, on type of switch, you could have a remote operation down here. In the middle, you would have a manual off. And up here, you would have a manual on mode. I find there are fewer choices in these single pole double throw switches. So I usually stick to the single pole single throw version. And in normal operation, I only use the remote input. And if the grid goes down, I use the manual switch. And there's really no need to use both at the same time. So let me get this box finished up. Put the uh, lid on there and I'll get it installed out in the patio and show you what it looks like. I'll be doing something different on this setup to allow this one box to control several sets of LED strip lights independently. So be sure and stay tuned for that video. I'll put links to the wiring diagrams in the video description. Questions welcome in the comment section below. And if you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And as always, thanks for watching.